How's it going everyone out there in YouTube land? So thanks for coming along to watch another episode of Ultra Running Tips With. Today we've got the incredible Ellie Greenwood to listen to. Before we get going though, do me a favour, just hit that subscribe button, leave a like, share the content, tell some pals, really does help the channel out. Okay, let's get going and see what Ellie has to say. So I'll just do a quick, well, saying quick, it's probably going to take me two minutes to read through all of this. Right, okay. I've got, I've got, a, I feel like Eamon Andrews with This Is Your Life. <laughs> so, how you doing, everyone? Thanks for joining us. Uh, so today, we have Ellie Greenwood joining us. And so Ellie was born in Dundee. Uh, so after graduating with a BA in history with sociology from York University at the age of 21, he moved to Canada to work for Ingham's Ski Company with a one-year work visa and ended up staying over there. You now live in Vancouver. Uh, you've been a vegetarian since you were 17. You had your nose pierced at 19. You don't own a TV microwave or, microwave or a car. <laughs> Became a Canadian citizen in 2014. Uh, run with Vancouver Falcons Athletics Club. Uh, writes for Ultra Running, Running Magazine and part of the Charmin Ultra coaching team. You like to run flats, trailer mountain. Uh, you're the first British woman to win comrades. You've run it four times, two up and two down in 2011, 12, 14 and 15. Uh, won it in 2014 in six hours, 18 minutes, 15 seconds. With 18K to go, you were eight minutes behind the leader. So I can only imagine the, the feeling that must have been being on a charge to overtake the, the woman in front and get the win. That must have been amazing. Uh, so that all that makes you a four-time gold medalist for comrades. Won Western States twice, and you're the course record holder, which is set in 2012. Uh, JFK, 50-mile record holder as well. Uh, you've run Chuckanut 50K seven times, won it five times. Ultra, where are we? Road 100K World Champion in 2010 and 12. Ultra Runner of the Year in 2011, 12, 14. Also won Ultra Runner of the Decade. Ran your first marathon in 2002 in Victoria, BC. Your first ultra was 1st of January 2004. It was the Fat Ass 50K in Vancouver. Snow-covered course and you came second place in five hours, 22 minutes. One minute behind Dan Taylor who won the women's race. Next few years, you went on to run small ultras such as the Dirty Duo, Diaz Vista 50K, uh, and you just won most things you entered. Like 2008, you ran four ultras, you won all four. 2009, uh, you ran six ultras, won all six. Uh, 2010 was a big year. You won the Canadian Death Race, which I just had to mention that name because it's just a cool name. <laughs> and you're the course record holder for that one as well. Uh, 2011, ran seven ultras, won five. Uh, 2012, ran 10 ultras, won nine, came second in the other one. And they were races like Western States, JFK, CCC, and their road 100K world champion. Again, 2013, had lots of injuries and only raced two oceans. And in 2014, ran six ultras, won four of them. And that was the year when you run, uh, won comrades. And you've raced less over the past few years, but you still have won loads of races, such as Festival of the Templars, Chuckanut 50, uh, and the Wild Horse Traverse 50K, to name but a few. And last year, you ran the same race as me, which was the great virtual race across Tennessee, but you did the double. <laughs> so well done. And hello, Ellie. Oh, you've done your research, Martin. Can I oh, say you, you, made, what, you made one error? Did I? Oh, what was it? I now own a microwave. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> you gave in. I don't care. You got all those race stats right. No, it, I do have a microwave now. But yeah, anyway, yeah, you, you got a lot of information and it was all spot on. There, Excellent. So. Our microwave, it makes you feel better, is older than our children. And they're, they're 20 odd. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Microwaves last forever. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I, uh, I I bought I bought an apartment having rented for years, and the apartment came with with a shiny microwave. Oh, so, you know, yeah, life has changed. They're they're good for warming up coffee. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no microwave meals for you then. No, no, I would no. I don't think I've ever uh, 
I mean, they've got their conveniences, but no, I would not have a microwave meal. No, so. no. And I see, uh, just looking at your Instagram post recently, you see that the snow has arrived over by you as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I live in North Vancouver, which I like to sort of joke is like where all the trail running snobs of Vancouver live because it's like right, like North Vancouver's little step out of the city. Um, it's closer to the mountains. So yeah, like Vancouver is great because like downtown, you tend to like maybe get snow a couple of times a year. And yeah. yet, yeah, like last weekend, you can easily have went with a friend, like you drive you know six miles up the road but it's literally up the road um yeah. and yet then we are in like knee deep snow already so which I was is, getting, you know, i'm going off topic already here i haven't even started but i did notice you were running you mentioned something about snowshoes the other day because i was looking at getting some snowshoes and you mentioned a brand i'd never heard of uh, yeah, so I'm an ambassador for Dion Snowshoes. Okay. Um, they're uh, out of Vermont, like East Coast US. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're super, like they're obviously like any product, you get a range of stuff, but Dion's are much generally lighter and they've got like running specific ones. Um, okay. So so that's super, right? Just because they're, I mean, they're not obviously, if you wear a lighter snowshoe, they're not going to be designed for going in super super deep powder yeah. um yeah. but you know if you're going on like groomed trails or trails that other people have been on and it's packed down a little yeah because um, they're a little more compact like you genuinely can like run in them really quite easily okay so, yeah. can you get those over here do you know or? i don't know i'll be no. honest i mean okay. you can get them in canada um there's a distributor here but i don't know if you can get them in the UK. okay right I, i'm just didn't mean to start with snowshoes, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a few years ago, you mentioned you, you, I don't know you you wrote about runners becoming too focused on races and getting too fixated and not enjoying the training. How important is it for people to enjoy the training for racing? Oh, I mean, I think it's essential, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, firstly. I not everybody but I'd say the majority of people get into running well for various reasons it might be it's the challenge it might be fitness lose weight this kind of stuff right but why do then most recreational runners you know after the initial maybe they've lost however many pounds they wanted to lose and they carry on running yeah because they like running right and then I think it can be a slippery slope of, you know, it depends on, you know, different people and different personalities. But, you know, then you start doing races and maybe your your first marathon, you're just delighted to finish. And then yeah. the next one, because just you've been a more experienced runner, you run a bit faster and then you start setting time goals and then you get disappointed that you don't always hit them or this kind of stuff. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, like racing is fantastic right like it's the way like you get to run in some really cool places you might not otherwise or you might not take on a distance that you wouldn't otherwise you get to meet a bunch of other runners and make great friends and all that kind of stuff so it's not that manti racing but i think it can be that you know i've seen you know quite a few people it starts to become like Oh, what are your races, right? Yeah. Um, you know, rather than like, what are you doing for training and are, are you having fun? And then, of course, even, you know, if you really love the race, well, the race is maybe like 1% of, of the running that you do. Yeah. So, I mean, that sort of saying of, you know, enjoying the process as much as the outcome, because then ultimately, you know, if then let's say you do have a disappointing race, mm-hmm. you're going and be far less disappointed if you've enjoyed all the training leading up to it yeah right? yeah for sure um so whereas if you're like oh you know i sort of forced myself to get out and i did you know all these workouts that i really really didn't want to do or whatever it might be and oh i felt i gave up things in order that i could do it, then you're going to feel almost like resentful of the race right um particularly if you don't get the result you want so yeah you want to enjoy the process and then like you know the race is the icing on the cake almost yeah yeah no that's very true you know it's very very easy to just get stuck in that little or my way of thinking though isn't it yeah and i mean races are great for motivation right because i'm sure for all of us even if we love running there are days where you you don't want to get out like the weather's nasty or you're tired or whatever it might be right so races can be great because they provide you 
I always shouldn't say like deadlines of, well, I've got to be ready to run whatever distance on whatever day. So yeah. they definitely can be, you know, super as incentives, but you want to, like I said, you're going to spend most of your time, not at the race, but actually doing the training. So yeah, it's, it's normal to have some training that you, you don't love, but if the majority of it, you're, 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 you're enjoying, you're enjoying, you're enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like you're reading my next question there, which was any, anyone struggling to to keep motivated for their training. Uh, what would you suggest? How do you how do you stay motivated? Um, yeah, like I guess it depends. Sort of maybe firstly, try and sort of analyze, like right, like why why aren't you enjoying your training? Um, is it, for example, okay, so some people I totally get it never want to run with other people right um but maybe it is that you've done um you know maybe you need to mix it up and go once a week go go do park run right just so you get to, and you might go well I'm training for a 50 mile race what well, yeah but if once a week you get to hang out with a bunch of runners run a bit fast it might not be the speed work that's perfect but hey it's a bit faster running you know and then if that keep, that might keep you motivated like throughout the week because you've got that oh, Saturday, I get to see, you know, a bunch of people, right? Yeah, um, yeah. so first I'd say, like, why aren't you? Um, also, I'm a big one. I mean, I think particularly during these, like, COVID times, a lot of people had, like, races rolled over. Um, yeah. And I always say, like, just because you had it rolled over, you might have wanted to do that race two years ago. You don't have to want to do it now, right? So be prepared to throw away, I don't know what British race entry fees are like these days, but be prepared to go, do you know what? I don't want to do that one anymore. Yeah, like it true. doesn't fit yeah. the lifestyle or whatever, right? Um, yeah, and then just mix things up, right? If you've got into a, we all get into routines of our like regular routes because, you know, you can just, get home after work and off you go and you know where you're going and what you're doing and whatever right but sometimes it might be go on a group run or you know go totally off script and you know go for some hike up a mountain you know mm-hmm. even if you're training for a flat race because if that's just a little bit of mixing it up and you come back feeling refreshed and you've had a great day right so yeah try and you know routine is good but if maybe you've got into too much of a routine or just reassess you know like I've seen a lot of people and again I'm not anti like longer races but sometimes it can be once you've done 100 miles you sort of feel like oh well nothing else is 100 miles no there's nothing wrong with going back and then going oh I'm going to try and do some I don't know like 20k mountain race instead right so maybe you might actually enjoy (laughs) yeah exactly right so you know be prepared to sort of step away and step back or do something just different yeah 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 so, so don't just don't make it your training just monotonous the same thing time and time again no. and and again different I think different personalities like some people you know enjoy monotony right like they're, they're creatures of habit and they can deal yeah. with that right and yeah. um, you know but I think even for most people like after a while it can come same old same old um, or if you've become one of those people you know we all have favorite races and if you've got into the you know oh every April I do this race and every June I do this race well yeah. you could do that you could maybe miss one year and pick another race that you've you've, you've not done before because it always clashes yeah. with one right you know so yeah I do think uh, yeah trying to avoid too much monotony and sometimes being prepared to like step back or for example you know like there's nothing wrong with doing a bit of cross training so you know mm-hmm. if you've got bought a bike and you're like oh I quite like this well maybe weave that into your training a bit again just to add some you know change of pace and a bit of different uh different will you bring in likes of downhill skiing or cross-country skiing do you do you take that into your training through the winter uh um I mean downhill skiing I am I always say I I will go down most ski slopes and none of them will be with much style um so and I think downhill skiing I mean it's not it's not the most relevant run training right so and but this is the other thing be prepared to do activities just because they're fun and that's why I do downhill skiing because I like it right like I never did it for like hey this is good training 
Um, yeah, I did a little bit of cross country skiing. Um, again, you know, it's not always the most practical. I mean, that's the nice thing about running is you can do it anywhere, literally out your door. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I might do a little bit of that or more just, yes, yeah, snowshoeing, like we've already mentioned, right? yeah. that kind of yeah. stuff. But, but definitely I do think, you know, um, you know, when I, I'm not racing much these days, um, I would do a bit more road running in the winter and trail and mountain stuff in the summer. And definitely I say to people I coach, if you live somewhere that has proper winter weather, which maybe is not most parts of the UK compared to Canada, <laughs> right? But then find something that takes advantage of that, right? So rather than being resentful, right, yeah. that oh, it's snowing and this is terrible. Well, yeah, if you get into snowshoeing, you're suddenly excited for the snow and that can be, that can be relevant. Yeah, yeah, so I must admit when I was training hard, I was pretty much a runner but even like I said within that I'd have focuses of road and speed at different times of year and then getting more vertical at other times of year and that was enough for me that it was yeah different types of running to look forward to yeah okay so what you saying bit of vertical do you do much um uphill intervals at all is, is that a part of your training or did, did it used to be is it still a I guess it depends what you totally mean by that, right? So, um, I mean, I would do classic hill repeats like any sort of probably marathon program would have in it, right? Yeah. Um, that, you know, as a, as a trail runner, you're going to say, well, that's not very much vertical because, you know, they're very yeah. short and not particularly steep. Um, but yeah, again, it depends on the race I was training for. Um, I mean, I'm lucky where I live that we have really have got like pretty much everything like you can run on a flat like you know bike path that's like entirely flat and paved yeah. um or yeah if i was training for like i did a couple of races um like the rut and um speed goat 50k both of which have got 10,000 foot of gain so yeah you probably want to get some vertical um yeah. and in north vancouver we've got grouse mountain which is it's about a mile and a half up and close to 3,000 foot of elevation gain. So, yeah, like that's awesome training for stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So, yeah, lots yeah of, there's some specificity. Is yeah. Good. Yeah. Lot, lots of people, and myself included in the past, have always just thought training for any event, you just need to do loads of miles. So, and that they'd just go out to like, I've got to get the miles in, I've got to get the miles in, and then things happen they get injured can, can you explain why it's not always good just going out and running loads of miles um yeah i mean there's all sorts of reasons right so i mean firstly again going back to basics okay i mean, i do say this right, like yeah okay you can get super specific um but fundamental okay there is a base just have base fitness okay so if you're getting all overwhelmed with oh i'm meant to do this or i'm meant to do that now, there is something to be said for good base miles, um, but it's dim it's diminishing returns. Right. So, again, maybe if you're a newer runner and sorry, I'm I'm a bit Canadian in my kilometers rather than my miles. Right? OK, but OK, let's say, you know, you've built up and you're regularly doing 30 miles a week. Right? Yeah. OK, so you go, oh, well, if I do 45 miles a week, clearly I'm going to be better. And you probably will be. Right. OK. And then you go, well, now I'm doing 45 miles a week. Clearly, I'll be better if I do 60 miles a week. Okay? Yeah. But it, it, the curve does, it isn't straight correlation of the more miles you do, you're better because you're more likely to get injured as you start adding more miles. And definitely once you get up to like really higher volume, right? So you're more likely to get injured and you don't gain the same fitness from those extra 15 miles a week as when you went from a 15 mile a week runner to a 30 mile a week runner. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got to be, you know, there is of course something if you are, again, depends on the distance that you're running, but yeah, if you signed up for a hundred mile race, you do need a certain amount of volume. Like there's no two ways about it. Right. And yes, you can cross train and some people are just, fortunate with their genetics and can get away with lower mileage and they're just those annoying people that how do you do that right so you do need a certain amount right but then for example you know I always say 
you know, one mile is not the equivalent to another mile. Um, and uh, so if you've signed up for a race with a ton of vert, mm -hmm. well, that's nice if you're just going getting in miles, but you might be better to get less miles but one of those sessions is, right, I don't live somewhere super hilly, but I'm going to go up and down the one hill that I've got, you know, as many times kind yeah. of thing, right? Um, because that's going to be getting you specifically ready for, you know, are your quads ready for the downhills or are you becoming stronger and, you know, you're just better at the uphills, that kind, yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and then I guess, you know, other than specificity, um, again you can get more sort of bang for your buck if you do a bit of speed work right because mm -hmm. again as a newer runner hey you'll just improve by running right because why well that's a training stimulus you were you didn't run before and now you're running right okay but then after a while you might find start to find you know you plateau and therefore you might want to add in even just like some fart legs or that kind of stuff and apart from anything it can be fun right because now it's not just like oh same old same old every day so yeah um a little bit of variety and yeah just stressing different systems right? yeah is yeah because yeah. I, I was always guilty of just going out and doing the same speed for the same miles and just doing a bit more and but loads of people well, do this and i guess another thing i was saying as well is like you know distances you run like and this is like an extreme example right okay you could run 35 miles a week yeah. by running five miles every day seven days a week hey you've got 35 miles in a week that's very yeah. good okay what would be better is oh could you make one of those a 10 mile run you know one of them five miles with some fart legs thrown in and yeah. then a couple of sevens because suddenly now oh the 10 miles i'm working on endurance i'm working on stamina um when i go out for just five miles but putting some fart legs i'm working on speed right now because you're doing some seven miles oh that makes the 10 miles feel a bit easier because you're sort of bridging the gap right yeah. so yeah like mixing up distances as well which which I think most runners do um I think what I see in some ultra runners is you know the long runs are really quite long and then function of working Monday to Friday their weekday runs might not be very long and sometimes it's just a matter of like, hey is one of those weekday runs could you add another 15 20 minutes onto it right mm -hmm. and then maybe you do a bit less another day right but then that's sort of again you have Mixing variety with yeah. yeah yeah okay um and you're a vegetarian, aren't you? So do you take supplements at all to, to help with vitamins or how have you coped? Um, how have you coped? How have you coped? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a therapy session. Well, I don't I've know not, why I said that. Lured, I've not been lured by bacon at any point. <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, the first thing I always say is I did not become a vegetarian for running performance reasons, right? Yeah. Um, which... So I guess I'm on the balance of um, you certainly can be a very good runner as a vegan or a vegetarian, like Scott Jurex, a vegan, yep. right? There's a whole ton of vegans out there these days and vegetarians, right? That isn't really the reason I did it. I did it more environmental and, you know, animal rights reasons yep. kind of stuff. But I think I've shown you can run quite well by not having to eat meat, right? Yep. Um, and then when it comes to supplements, Generally, what I would say to folks is, hey, you could eat a, a diet where you don't exclude anything, i.e. a diet that includes meat yeah. and need to take supplements, or you could be a vegetarian and not have to take supplements. So if all I would say is if somebody's going to make um, like a, a noticeable diet change mm -hmm. where it means particularly excluding stuff, because let's be honest, as a vegetarian or a vegan, you are excluding things from your diet. So the first thing is if you go, let's say from somebody who eats meat a couple of times a week and you're going to be a vegan, I'm not going to say, if you're cutting stuff out, okay, what are you going to bring in instead? You can't just cut things out. Okay, yeah. so that would be the first thing. Um, then do I personally take supplements? The reason, sorry, I'm not giving you a straight answer. <laughs> That's other, all right. Okay. okay, like I said, you can be vegetarian and not need to. So what I would encourage people if they're thinking of doing that, right, is maybe one, consider if you're cutting supplement out of your diet, what you're going to put in. And then if you're able to, a few months into the diet, go and get some blood work done. And do you need to take supplements? right? Yeah. Uh, because there is no point in taking supplements 
if you're getting everything you need out of your diet, yeah. right? Um, I put my hand up, by the way, I'm not a nutritionist, okay? But now if you're vegan, I do think you need to be much more careful and it's more likely that you are going to need to take supplements. But basically I'd say to folks, hey, you know, maybe if you can a few months in, because of course, if you if you become vegetarian one week and then have blood work done the next week, yeah, well, you've still got the effects of the bacon you ate two weeks ago in your system, <laughs> right? And that you've eaten all your life, right? Yeah. So, but give it a few months. And if it's like, oh, wait a minute, my iron levels are low or my B vitamins, which, I mean, these are the kind of things that... I would look out for is iron levels, B vitamins, calcium, like those are the typical things that might be a problem for a vegetarian diet, right? And then you find out, do I need to supplement? And if you do, how much and that kind of stuff. Okay. So yeah. And if you want a direct answer, yes, I take vitamin D. <laughs> no, that answer is absolutely great. And B12, right? But like I said, I mean, it's possible, for example, to have too much iron and that's dangerous, yeah. right? Or you might be somebody, oh, well, I'm taking my iron tablet every day. Well, for a while, I had to take two every day. So don't pat yourself on the back. You're having one. If you go and have tests, you find out, oh, what isn't enough, right? So that's why I'd encourage people, if they're making a dramatic you know, diet change that's inc excluding stuff, yeah. um, think about what you're excluding. Are there things in your new diet that you can bring in that, you know, go within the rules, as it were, of your new diet? And particularly if you start to feel not great or you see your performance is declining or you're losing weight or whatever after a few months, maybe we'll go and speak to a nutritionist or have uh, have some blood work done and see if there's anything that needs to be addressed. So, OK, yeah. that's great. You can tell I'm a meat eater. I was just intrigued as to it's like what, what happens if you you don't eat meat and you're vegetarian there's loads of vegetarians and vegans out there is there anything they should look out for so i'm pretty sure you covered it well there yeah like i said I, I think probably like b vitamins i mean vitamin d i think you can lack as a meat eater as well because you know like most of us spend like vitamin d is the sunshine right most of us spend a lot of time inside we, we lack lots Northern of that in scotland yeah, no, and exactly like I remember a nutritionist once said to me, like, well, feel free to not take vitamin D, but you're going to have to spend every daylight hour outside, given where we live. And then you and, and make sure you like you're wearing shorts and T-shirt like 12 months of the year, because otherwise you're not you've got enough skin. Experience. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's totally possible, like I said, to not have to take supplements as a vegetarian. And sometimes it's just a matter of luck, you know, of the way, you know, your body is set up that maybe you need a little help. Maybe you don't. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So do you, oh, for running long distances, do you use any mantras at all or what? What can you suggest to people to keep their mind occupied when they're they're out running for hours and hours on end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. So um, I guess one, I, I do like the idea of having a mantra for people mm -hmm. like when they're racing. Right. Which I know some people go, oh, this sounds a bit, you know, waffly and yeah. you know, I'm just going to go and run and I don't need something. <laughs> OK. But I mean, I would basically say something that gives you focus and a reminder of why you're out there right yeah. so if you are i don't know 52 miles into a 100 mile and you're going well this is ridiculous what on earth am i doing i'm dropping out at the next stage station because of course we all have these thoughts right okay and so you start to, you're like right i'm out of this okay if you have a mantra that gives you your your why right mm -hmm. Um, and it might be, it will, and this is it, I would say like mantras, uh, I'm not going to say here is the mantra you must have, no, right? No. Because be very and individual. Also it might, they're individual and it might also change, you know, from one race to another yeah. or that kind of stuff, right? Um, it might be that you think of some friend who, I know this sounds terrible, has passed away and would have loved to have been at this race and you go yeah. and you just think, so when you want to quit, you're like, well, they would love to be here and they're not, so yeah. I'm running it for them, right? Um, or, yeah, just something that gives you, you're like, okay, yeah, no, I'm not going to, like, stop easily. Of course, there's very valid reasons for dropping out of a race if you did. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I used to... Quite often I say, uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do, right? right. 
Um, that's only any good if you value toughness, if you're like, well, that's just silly, then that's not going to help you, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I've got another one I often tell coaching clients of uh, patience, perseverance, and positivity, right? And you want something really quite, you know, a word or a few words. You don't want some essay right because the reason yeah. being and if, you know if you want to write it on your arm right so if you're running yeah, yeah. around yeah. down and just like, yeah a little reminder i've, I've written yeah. smile with a big happy face in my hand before and it's amazing how effective it is yeah exactly and that's probably you going like okay fundamentally i'm out here for fun right yeah. so if you get in a bit of a like oh this is miserable i'm not um, no, come on, smile. This is meant to be fun, right? Yeah, yeah so it's perfect. Exactly, just something like that. So, yeah. yeah. So virtual races, have, have you, you did the virtual race at Tennessee. How did you find that? You did the double, which is great. Um, but have you enjoyed doing virtual races? Have you, have you entered any more or do you think they're going to just fizzle out with lockdowns disappearing? Um. So uh, I really can't run much these days, Martin, right? I've got this weird leg, leg issue, right? So when I did, so the quick answer would be, am I going to do a bunch of virtual races? No. It could be <laughs> short virtual run. races, though. They don't have to be long ones. Yeah, yeah. No, no, this is true. So um, you shouldn't have got me on this. Okay. <laughs> I loved the race across Tennessee, okay? Yeah. And other people, maybe you're one going, yeah, 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 okay, right. So, and other people were just like, but you're just going for a run and entering a number on a screen, yeah. and then some guy in Tennessee mails you a horrendous yellow T-shirt and a belt buckle. Why is that motivating? Right? Okay. And then I, oh no, no, no. okay. So, I mean, the, the cool thing, and I, I remember trying to talk about, I did the race across Tennessee this year as well, okay, but I only did the one crossing, right? Right. okay. So, uh, I mean, I think the reason it was great, the Tennessee race last year, okay, it was a real community, like that Facebook page, for the race across Tennessee, like, I didn't follow it all the time, because there were so many posts. But people were putting up like, you know, I'm taking my disabled son out in the, his wheelchair, and people who'd never walked in their life, like, I don't know if you saw, sorry, but like I said, I'm a total cover, the, pe the people that produced the t-shirts uh -huh. for the race, could what was it like 18,000 people did the race in the end? Oh, yeah, there was absolutely tons of them. I can't remember. It was, it was thousands and thousands. The people who produced the t shirts put this post up thank you so much. You've given two people full time employment instead of me having to let them go for the next, I don't know, six weeks or something. You're like, that's kind of cool. And then one of these t shirt manufacturer people said, I never exercised in my life, but I've decided to try and walk across Tennessee because all you guys are doing it. <laughs> And you're like, this is like, this is so cool. So I love the community kind yeah. of thing, right? Okay. And it was obviously at a time where gyms were closed or run clubs weren't run, uh, operating. And so probably everybody was spending less time together. So, so suddenly you had this random, diverse, totally mishmash community online, which is cool. And then also it did give you... The nice thing I liked about Tennessee, you could take a day off. You could take as many days off as you wanted, yeah. but then you had to catch up. You had to go, oh, wait a minute, I was meant to get my, what was it? I know this. It was like, five, what was it? 8.3 kilometers a day you had to get. Okay. <laughs> so I was in for it. So if, I, if one day, and I actually only took one day off in the whole four months, right? right? But I walked, I walked quite a lot, Martin, right? Okay. So, but it was cool because if one day you did like 5K, you're like, all right, okay, I'm 3.3K short. Well, if I do 9K the other day, right? So is this kind constant like absolutely have days off like because run streaks I think are great but as soon as you miss a day well you're done right yeah. was this one of nice flexibility it fitted into like I mean I did far too much vertical because you got no reward for vertical no tennis, no you didn't did you right? so you know you could still go and do some like crazy mountain hike with your friends and go oh well that like 10k took me five hours but Great, I'll give my 10K to Tennessee. So uh, yeah, anyway, personally, I, I really got into it. but and, and also it was a nice time frame of four months was long enough, but not too long, right? Yeah. You know, like it was long enough that it was like, okay, I'm pretty dedicated to this and I'm two weeks in, but I've hardly started, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yet it did have an end frame, right? Which was kind of good, right? Um, so yeah, anyway, sorry, I've got a total selling spree for last. Oh, that's all right. I, I was amazed at how into it I got. 
I thought, yeah, you know, my son paid for an entry for me, and I thought it's a virtual race. I'm just, what's this all about? But within a month, I was checking other people. I had a list of people I was trying to make sure I was doing better than. I was seeing what and, miles they were doing. I was getting really into and, it. Yeah, no, and this is it, right? Like fundamentally, like okay, the people that won well one it wasn't really a race against other people so it wasn't like oh well done you won yeah. but they were doing let's be honest stupid amounts martin so for the rest of us it was like well we're never going to win this thing or do but you could go oh how many ellies are in this race oh look i'm beating the other ellie well, that's like the most <laughs> yeah. Thing. Anyway, so yeah no it was good fun so uh yeah virtual races i can see they might stick around, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I do think a lot of them will fizzle out quite yep. a lot, right? Um, because it was a bit of a stopgap measure of, okay, there's no races, we're all at home a lot, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but then, okay, I mean, London Marathon, right? You know, there's only ever going to be so many people that can do that, right? Yeah. And in any one year. So if other people are allowed to do it as a virtual race, then that's awesome. And if people want to say, oh, but that's not the real race, it's virtual. No, of course it isn't. But if that got somebody running 26 miles that wouldn't have otherwise run 26 miles, I think that's awesome. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. But I do think they might fizzle out a it little might bit. might fizzle out a bit. But I know of quite a few people that did the New York virtual marathon last week, I think it was. So they, they do have a bit of a place now, but I think last summer they was a, a special a time for them. Yeah, and people feeling they can participate, right? Um, and I think maybe the ones that will stick around are the ones that are maybe like a bit more unique, right? Like, let's be honest, like, I don't know, if the local half marathon in Vancouver in five years says we've got a virtual option, I think people go, why? Right? Yeah. Whereas there's others that had like vertical challenges in a week or whatever that were a bit like unique, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And it allows people to... Um, like hard rock in the US, mm-hmm. they had one where you had to get the hard rock amount of vert, which is a lot, right? right? Like it's 33,000 foot, right? Yeah. Um, now, hard rock is extremely difficult to get into because it's a very small race. Well, by having a virtual race, people felt they got to be a part of the hard rock community, mm-hmm. knowing that they'll never be able to get to run the real race, right? Yeah. So that's also cool, right? That people feel a part of something that they might otherwise think is sort of out of their zone. So I think the more unusual ones might stick around. The, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, recovery after runs. Like I always think this, oh, well, for me, there's always like three things I need to do after I've been for a runner. I come in, Usually you're cold and wet, so you go for a shower. You need to eat something, but you're also supposed to stretch as well. How how on earth do you fit everything in? I know you're not always cold and wet and you want to go for a shower, but stretching is always the thing that misses out for me. Have you got any tips on how to approach recovery after running? Yeah, okay. So um, firstly try and not make a big deal of it right, right. like i think we'll do oh i've got to do this stretching right let's be honest you don't have to stretch for half an hour no. okay so one really try and sort of convince yourself of like okay this is not actually that big a deal you've got a mental block because it's not the fun bit right like i don't think i've ever met anybody who says oh, i love stretching right no. okay some people enjoy it more than others right okay um then I guess I would and, and particularly when you start with anything start small right so don't I would almost say don't say right I'm going to stretch after every single run because yeah. like the run streak as soon as you don't do it once oh well what's the point I haven't done it now okay well clearly I'm not going to get into this routine right so if you run let's say five days a week and you like yeah and I rarely stretch okay say to yourself I'm going to stretch three times a week Right. Okay. You might eventually aim to get to more. Okay. But then that gives you a cop out. So if you get back after run and you're like, oh, I'm super busy. I've got to get this done or I just can't be bothered. Right. Okay. That's okay. You'll have to do it tomorrow. But if you're not going to do it now. Right. So you sort of negotiate with yourself. right? Right. So I guess I'm saying like set a realistic target and don't be over ambitious. Right. Um. And I mean, another thing I might say is, I mean, and this might depend on the runner. Okay, 
I was always a runner who would have never cut a run short, right? Okay. So I said, well, you can cut a run short if that means you have time to stretch. And then suddenly people find they have time to stretch and not cut their run short because they're like, no, 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 I'll find the time. Right. Okay. So, but genuinely, if you have like an hour and so you're thinking, oh, I'll go for an hour run, no, go, well, what's actually probably better for you know physically recovery you being able to run the next day is we'll go for a 50 minute run and then do some stretching right um and if the weather is nice maybe you say right I'm going to do the stretching outside because we all know you get home like you said and you know if you've got family they're like oh can you do this or your phone beeps and you're onto your text messages or whatever right so really try and include it like tack it on to something else right rather than making it a, a separate activity yes yeah. so, okay yeah. well, can, the, can, the only other thing i'll say is then you know maybe even keep a track of it right so i don't know if you have a calendar on your fridge or whatever right yeah, yeah. you know and if you want plan it out in advance or at minimum you know write it once you've done it so you've got an honesty check at the end of the week yeah. of like oh i said i'd do it three times i've only done it twice okay then next week and also it's a little like the tendency thing a sense of accomplishment oh i've got three little x's on my calendar right i've done the stretching yeah. for this week right? i did actually but, buy myself a blackboard for just for that reason because me physically writing things down i could visualize it and it felt better for i've done it now because I've actually written yeah, it down. and I think that's it. Like, it's silly. It's like in a little account. Or like, if you've got my sense of humour, I'd probably buy myself gold stars or something, Martin, right? And that's stick little stuff. But like, if that genuinely, you go like, as an adult, you're like, oh, I've got a little gold star, right? Uh, but yeah, just something like that, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you normally run um, solo or do you, do you run in groups mostly or do you mix it up? Uh, so again i do emphasize i don't run tons these days so i'll, I'll get i'll treat that as a past question okay, but yeah. all right, okay. <laughs> so, um i mostly ran on my own but but reasonably frequently i did run with other people if that makes sense right okay. so and i guess it depends right like um i was a member of a running club that you mentioned at the start the vancouver falcons mm -hmm. so i did speed work with them once maybe twice a week right um if i had a friend to go on a long run with right that you know meshed up with whatever they were training for and whatever i was training for then great we've got company for a long run that's super um and then yeah just for my like every day i mean i don't mind like i quite like running on my own right um i don't think i'd have wanted to do all my running on my own right um and again depends how focused i was right so if i didn't have you know if it was sort of end of race season mm -hmm. then i'd happily go out on a group run of oh what are you doing today okay sure i'll tag along as well and you know you didn't care but you know i will admit when i was more focused on races well i had no i want to run this distance on this kind of train or whatever and yeah and at my pace so i might might well have done a bunch on my own but also i liked running on my own so, yeah, yeah yeah i always used to run very early in the morning and always thought well no one else is going to want to get up at half five and go for a run with me on a trail not far from my house so i was always out my own well and and this is it man, right and this is where i say like okay like and if you love that well one okay yes there's confines of like yeah everybody has their well ideally i go running here and do this right okay right but then again like if i was coaching you Martin, right, okay and if you're like oh like i've had enough of this or whatever i'd be like look one day a week yeah. right mm -hmm. can you go out on the evening and you've got a work colleague and they also want to go out and i don't care what pace you run or what you do because again if that gives you the like oh that was fun right yeah. then you don't mind the other days of the week when you're going at 5 30 from your house on your own right so yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 no i know but as runners we all get very stuck in a well i've got to do this yeah. right yeah. if you want to do that great you can come with me but yeah there, there's nothing wrong if you set you know if you set race targets you you know if you want to dedicate yourself to them and feel you need to do that then that's fine mm -hmm. so, so as someone who's suffered from loads of injuries over the years, how, how have you kind of coped with that? Because I, I've not been able to run much this year myself, and I've struggled because 
running was always my escape from everything. But not being able to do that, I found it quite difficult. Have you got any tips? Um, I mean, yeah, it can, it can be difficult, right? And I think sort of accepting that, you know, like I'm always very dubious of people. Oh, well, I'm injured, but it doesn't matter really. I'm like, really? That seems a little odd that you're, <laughs> that you're perfectly fine with it, right? Okay. Um, I mean, and again, maybe a bit different with the way the world's been recently, right? Um, I mean, I volunteer, you know, at races when I can, right? I know some injured runners, or I can't imagine the worst thing in the world of going and volunteering at a race, right? But if part of being at a race is being part of the community, seeing people, like that kind of stuff, like you can get that by volunteering, right? Okay. Um, Or like I do a bunch of hiking, right? Okay. No, no people, oh, I'm not a hiker, right? Okay. But you at some point have to accept, okay, if you can't run, you can't run. So you can sit at home and be really miserable, okay? Or you can go, well, what's the next best thing, right? Okay. Um, I'm always one for like, you know, only, I would only recommend people cross train, one, if it's going to help their recovery from their injury, Mm. or two, if they're going to enjoy it. Right. So, you know, I've done a bunch of road cycling or do like, you know, hiking or I don't particularly love swimming, but I prefer to go swimming than not do anything. Right. So, yeah, I guess finding alternative activities. But like I said, if you enjoy them, if you're like, I cannot stand swimming, I'm going to say, well, probably you've got an injury. They'll heal over time. Just don't worry about losing some fitness, you know, and maybe you go off in an entirely different direction. Right. And I don't know. I maybe you don't do knitting Martin I don't know but maybe you take up some (laughs) knitting project or maybe you're like oh I've always you know maybe you've eyed a race that requires navigation oh I never did get around to doing some orienteering courses are there any orienteering I could do now right so maybe there's skills you could work on maybe you're like well, I have said I, you know, get to the gym and work on my strength, but I always sort of found like the stretching, oh, I never had time for it. Well, now I've got time, right? (laughs) So, and then you can feel like you're being productive, working towards future running goals, even though you're not running, if that makes sense. I have found not being able to run, I have had more time to do other things. So, yeah, which, which is good. And being able to do things like this and talking to you is great for me because, it's keeping me involved with running related things. Well, and, and that's what I say, right? Like, like I said, I totally get it why some people like step aside. Like I've got a friend right now and she seems to have really got into like um, doing a, a bunch of like really amazing drawing, right? And I think it's partly because she can't be as physically active right now. And mm-hmm. in a way, if she's gone, I don't want to be a part of that sort of like active scene right now, then great. And maybe in a year, she'll come back to it, right? You know, but she's gone an entirely different direction. Or like you've said, you've said, hey, I'll, I'll do these YouTube stuff. I'll like, yeah, I'll be involved. And that's why I say about volunteering is like, yeah, of course, sometimes you might want to run a race, but if you can't run a race, it's still pretty nice to see all your friends, yeah, yeah, exactly. feel, you're, feel you're giving back, maybe learn from watching what other runners do in races because you're at an aid station, whatever it might be. And so you go, OK, yeah, I would have liked to run, but that was a pretty good sort of next best. Yeah. And you're investing in your future running, as it were. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. OK, so winter's here. Uh, well, it is here. I'm sure it is where you are as well. It's dark. So like, do you have a a favorite kind of head torch or do you run with um, a waist torch? I keep seeing people doing reviews of things where where they strap them (laughs) to their chest or waist and they've got a light shine. I've only ever used a head torch. What what do you use? If you'd given me the heads up, Martin, I would have worn my Vizzy vest, which has all these beautiful flashing colors on it. (laughs) (laughs) So like Blackpool Illuminations. Well, it was funny. I showed up at a race uh, a while back, Whistler Alpine Meadows, and I'd been assigned, I think it was um, like racer check-in. And I showed up with this bright vest on. They said, oh, no, you're doing the parking with that vest on, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I was flat. Anyway, um, so, yeah, it's definitely a good po- I mean, one thing, okay, there's tons of gear out there. There's some, of course, I would say is better than others. Others is personal preference, yeah. right? Okay, Um, But it's a good question you ask, reason being, if somebody hasn't run in the dark much before, Mm. it gives you way more confidence if you can see where you're going. Yes, it does help. Uh, 
so yeah like you're suddenly like oh I'm not worried about falling over or not seeing stuff or whatever it might be right so I always say like a good headlamp is a bit of a sort of investment piece of kit like once you've got it if you've got a pretty decent one it should last quite a few years right and if you're going to use it you know a few times a week for five months of the year well it's well worth having it um so what I would wear is I have a Petzl now headlamp that's what I've got um I probably shouldn't say that, but like it's probably not the one I would buy now because I think they've got a smaller one now because the now is quite bulky, but I've had it for years Mm -hmm. and it's great and it's very bright. Now I think you can get another Petzl and there are other brands available um, (laughs) that are equally as bright, but slightly more compact. I like the now because it's got a big chunky button and you can use it with your gloves on the. I know it is very easy to adjust and personally I find it secure and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. And basically I say to people like buy as many lumens as you can afford, right. Put it that way. Right. You know, so, you know, yeah, there might be all other bells and whistles and whatnot, but basically the bright brightness is the most important thing for Mm -hmm. a headlamp. Right. Um, And then I have got, um, it's called a Visi vest, but it's one of these like strap over vests that's got a white light on the front and then a fairly big plastic uh, sort of square on the back and it can light up in green and purple and all sorts, (laughs) right? Um, which depends where you run like if you run on dark country roads it's really good because people are like what on earth is that right or again if you so I wear that a bit more I'll be honest to be seen rather than for seeing where I'm going Um, but it's quite nice because it does have the white light like I said at chest level as well I don't think I'd wear just that in a race I'll be honest for seeing let's say like running on a trail or whatever right so yeah yeah and then waist lights I've never personally worn one um but if somebody's thinking of wearing one for an ultra of course they're around your stomach really so if you're particularly somebody that tends to have like stomach issues that might not be the best idea right I mean like everything is personal go try it or whatever right but it can you know again you've either got something a bit tight or or it's moving a little on your stomach and if you're already slightly like you know upset from you know eating all the weird and wonderful food uh, yeah. at an ultra yeah. then you might be better sticking with one of these vests and or a headlamp so, okay yeah. okay sticking with the winter themes like snows here do you use things like yak tracks or micro spikes um, to run in, or do you, do you have shoes with actual spikes in? Uh, right. So um, I like to qualify in case any Canadians are listening and they're like, she lives in Vancouver, they don't get proper winter. Okay. So <laughs> my, my qualification is I did live in Banff, Alberta, where it was very snowy and uh, very cold for much of the winter. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, so again like everything it depends okay if if you if you're going to be running on a like packed snow this is sounds really i mean i feel like an uh, inuit now of all the different types of snow and this depends what you're going to wear <laughs> on your boots okay so if you're going where like like packed snow on, on road in winter i always wore trail shoes even on road because it makes sense you're not actually running on a road now you're running on a snow covered road right and generally of course trail shoes have better traction and stickier rubber and that kind of stuff so that would be the first thing i would do um if i was going somewhere with you know a bunch of snow right yeah um then you get like the uh, yak tracks like the metal little yeah. s- like sort of coil ones right mm-hmm. And or I've got a pair of Catulas, yeah, which are much more like the yeah. and stuff. So if I'm going in deep snow or really uneven snow that's like churned up or whatever, and maybe a post hole a bit, personally I find yak tracks are a bit fragile for that. Yeah. The Catulas really stay on well; they get a really good grip. Yeah, so they're like almost like a crampon, on, aren't they? They are exactly, but therefore, if you get to a bit where it's like, oh, and now there's a stretch of mile on like clear road, yeah. they're awful, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. I would really only wear katulas if I'm probably trail running in a significant amount of snow, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, if you were like, I don't know, springtime and you've more like got like a sheet of ice or you know, oh goodness, there's like black ice and bits, I might be more inclined. I've never actually done it to put screws in my shoes. Okay. 
or or wear the coiled yak tracks like the coiled yak tracks you can wear on like a very very thin layer of snow or ice on yeah. a on a tarmac road and they never feel great but they feel good and they'll certainly give you traction so, yeah. yeah yeah okay okay so can you give a couple of kind of exercises that you think um the viewers would benefit from if they're, they're going to do a couple of exercises each day uh, which can, is going to help their running what, what would you suggest right okay first you know you should have a disclaimer across this youtube i'm not a personal trainer i'm a running coach but okay yep. so <laughs> i guess i would say um so if you're going to do them every day one okay you don't want to do something too demanding like you shouldn't be doing heavy weights every day right because that just doesn't make sense right yeah. okay um two of these are going to be more sort of like prehab like preventative stuff right rather than fixing one thing um so and um, you probably mostly want to focus on uh glutes hamstrings and quads I would say, right? Like, unless you have a specific, you know, if you're somebody with weak calves, maybe you should be doing calf exercises yeah, every day, yeah. right? Okay. And then again, I'm gonna, you shouldn't have asked me this. There's no straight answer, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, if you're training for a mountain race or a road marathon, maybe you have a slightly different focus, right? Okay. But a couple, couple of basics. Um, if you get one of a piece of uh, the like one of those small rubber bands that you can put around, like just above your knees, yeah. right? can buy the the rubber stuff like from a physio and you just tie it off in a knot and you get it so it's about it's going to be about the size of if you're standing with your legs hip width apart mm -hmm. and you can just put that around your knees yeah. and then you're going to uh, crab walking yeah. um so now you're trying to get me to explain exercises <laughs> it's really hard <laughs> If you look up lateral crab walk with exercise band, yeah. but basically you're going to have your be knees bent softly. You're not down in a squat position. Your chest is nice and open. You're, so your torso is facing upwards and you're going to walk sideways like a crab and you're yeah. going resistance against the band, right? So, and make sure that your knees are staying out and not collapsing in. And that's going to work your glutes. And you should be using your glutes when you're running because they're the biggest muscle in your body. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's a good one. And you can do like 10, 15 in either direction. Perfect. You can do monster walks, which is where you walk forwards in the same position with your band, and then you can walk backwards. Um, so I would probably do some crab walks with the band. Mm -hmm. um, I then might do some uh, single leg squats, yep. um, which definitely if you've never done before, I would start with body weight. And then if you want, you can add, you know, bags of rice or uh, kettlebells or dumbbells like on your shoulders or, or down by your side yeah. um the reason like double leg squats are good mm -hmm. um but as a runner you're really the running motion is you're going from one leg to another so that's the definition of running rather than walking is your one foot on the ground at yeah. the time right yeah, yeah. So now if you do a double leg squat, it is great, but you can kind of compensate. Maybe your left side's a bit weaker. And so you're sort of without realizing you using your right leg more. So single leg exercises. So yeah, you could just do three sets of 10 single leg squats. It's also good for balance. It'll yeah. work your stabilizer muscles in your ankles a little bit, right? And again, making sure that your knees tracking forward and not collapsing out, it's too much. Yeah. So I would do that. Um, and then I might do something simple like uh, step ups or box jumps, right? And again, all of these, if you're doing them every day, like three sets of 10, that kind of stuff, right? Um, is good. So, okay. Yeah. Perfect. That, that's great. So I've got just to finish off with a quick fire five. So five quick fire questions for you. Okay. So okay. what time of day do you go for your runs, morning, afternoon, or evenings? Oh, I was always an evening runner. Right. Okay. Gels or solid food? Uh, gels. Gel. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> beer, wine, or spirits? Uh, beer. Beer. Nobody said spirits yet. <laughs> Uh, music. I'm not, I'm not surprised for runners, no. I'll be honest. No, but surely yeah. somebody out there likes a gin and tonic or something. Yeah, I could get, anyway, these are quick questions. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> music, music, podcasts, or nothing? Uh, trail running, nothing. Uh, road running, probably music, and podcasts when I'm walking. <laughs> okay, okay. And what's your favorite running book? Um, 
I haven't read it for a long time. So, but I remember reading it anyway. Um, Feet in the Clouds, Richard okay. Asquith. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. Yeah, one. yeah. no, that's yeah. great. Perfect. Well, thanks for that, Ellie. And everyone can find you on social media on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and you've even got a blog spot as well, haven't you? The blog spot, yes, don't expect any. Uh, if, if they want race reports from 10 years ago, you know, there's plenty up there. Um, more current is definitely, yeah, I'm Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. I'm, yeah, you yeah. know, I do like social media. It's a fun way to connect with people. Yeah, so, yeah no, yeah. it is. It is perfect. Perfect. Well, thank, thanks, for, thanks for that, Ellie. And thanks everyone for watching. And we'll catch you next time. So. Okay.